Hey, it's Matt, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you one of my newest obsessions, and that's bog gardening. There's all kinds of amazing, really cool plants that you can put in your own home bog garden. Take, for example, this carnivorous plant that's native to right here in New England. It's called the purple pitcher plant. Today I'm gonna to share with you two different ways to have a bog garden. The first way is right in the ground in your own home garden. The second is right in a container, and you can have your very own bog in a pot. Before we create our bog garden, let's take a horticultural adventure and figure out what a bog really is. 10,000 years ago, a massive receding glacier, miles thick, carved into the Earth's bedrock. As the glaciers receded, deposits of ice were left buried. As temperatures rose, the massive chunks of ice melted, forming the Great Swamp of Wenham, Massachusetts. Areas of the Great Swamp became bogland. Bogs are an accumulation of dead organic material in a wetland. After thousands of years, this accumulation became what is known as peat. Many different types of organisms became adapted to this new environment. Mosses known as sphagnum moss flourished in the bog habitat. Bogs are highly acidic and nutrient poor. Plants growing in these conditions needed new adaptations to harness nutrients. One adaptation is becoming carnivorous. The purple pitcher plant is a carnivorous plant that has adapted to harness energy, not only from the sun, but from insects. The tiny hairs pointing downward make it almost impossible for an insect to escape from the bottom of the pitcher trap. An important observation found in nature that we can take home to our bog garden is that pitcher plants adapted to poor growing conditions. It's critical that you never fertilize your pitcher plants or water your bog with anything other than rainwater harvested from a rain barrel. Wetlands are an important habitat to protect, and that is why it's critical to never harvest anything from nature, including plants. There are many nurseries that can provide you with sustainably sourced plants and growing mediums. Glaciers are not the only thing that can shape the land. Since European arrival, the Great Swamp has been in a constant state of change. Early American colonists would harvest peat to burn as a source of fuel. In some areas of the Great Swamp in Wenham, the colonists would harvest peat over 15 feet deep. It should be noted that it takes one year for a millimeter of peat to be formed on the surface of a bog. Peat being harvested in the Great Swamp was over 15 feet deep in some areas. That means what was burned took over 5,000 years to form. After most of the peat was harvested and burned, the colonists turned to clearing most of the trees of the Great Swamp. George Washington, visiting Essex County in 1789, wrote in his diary, The country seems to be in a manner entirely stripped of wood. Thank you.